What's up guys? Uh, this is a quick video tutorial uh, for the XSplit forum and it's related to the XSplit broadcaster. Now I really like this software, I think it's fantastic. Uh, there's a the little things that they could possibly add, uh, maybe improve, but on the whole it's very user friendly and it works quite well for me. Uh, one of the things you can do with XSplit is you can add other live streams in, uh, which is really, really handy if you want to add uh, someone else's gameplay in. Uh, so, say you've got like a dual stream going on, uh, and you want to add their gameplay in, uh, you could do you could do use this technique to do that, or you can just add webcams, uh, something like that. Uh, you can add webcams from Skype, but the Skype quality fluctuates; it goes up and down, up and down, and it never seems to be stable and you've got a screen capture and all that kind of stuff so it's not the, the most practical way of doing it now this way that I'm going to say uh, to explain how to do is uh, it's pretty simple uh, and it will give you absolutely fantastic quality uh, for example the way I normally do it uh, so I'm going to sort of explain how I would do it tailor made sort of for me and you just need to tweak it change it for how you stream so I normally stream the Xbox and normally play Call of Duty games uh, and I'll probably get a lobby of like two or three other guys, good friends of mine, and I will have my webcam in, and I'll have their webcams as well. So I'll have say two other webcams. Now, the good thing about that is it adds a bit more activity, act to interactivity, even if I can say the words. That it'll add that to the stream, uh, so the guys, you know, the viewers, they can see you, they can see the other two guys that you're playing with. Uh, so lots of, uh, with it being Call of Duty, lots of rage faces, people like that. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and get this installed. So the first thing you want to do is download Flash Media Server. Uh, there's a few versions of this, but you want to go ahead and download the Developer Edition. Uh, that version's free and it limits you to 10 connections. So if you plan on having more than 10 uh, streams go into your server, I think that's right, then it will go flop. So just uh, be wary of that. Uh, but everything else is uh, quality and everything is uh, this, it's it's all the same. Uh, there's no difference between this one and, and the, the you know the enterprise service or something like that. So go ahead and download that, and we're just going to go ahead and install that. Now this software is pretty easy to install, pretty easy to set up and manage. Uh, I have this set up on a dedicated server, uh, so I don't run this locally, but you know if you don't have a dedicated server and you're running it locally it shouldn't bog down your system or anything like that people are not going to be streaming HD streams to you or anything like that unless you you know specifically told them to but if you're just doing it to add webcams in and stuff like that you won't notice a difference with it running in the background so I'm just going to go through the settings of installing this real quick serial number leave blank it's the developer edition so that's what it will install by default uh, yeah just install it in a default location uh, Apache 2.2, you don't want to install that, that installs um, like a web interface, uh, it's it's not needed, so just uncheck that, click next, administration, this is not too important, you're not really going to be administrating it, uh, or you're not going to be in the admin console, uh, the, only, the only purpose of that is to see what's, uh, you know, what connections you've got going on, it's mainly used in bigger servers, but you have to put details in there, so you can put whatever you want for the name, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and you put whatever you want for the password. Let's type that again, and then just click next. Okay, now this is important. In order for people to stream to you, if you're behind a router, uh, or if you've got a firewall on your actual computer, then you'll need to open up port one nine three five. That is the port that Flash Media Server uses. So make sure that port is open or forwarded to the particular computer that uh, the server is installed on otherwise people won't connect. That's the only port you've got to open so the port 1111 you don't need to bother about that, that's the admin server so just go ahead click next let that install and that shouldn't take too long I hope I explained this tutorial correctly guys if, if I miss something or you, you struggle to understand something then just let me know this is going to be uh, in the main XSplit forum in the tutorial section so just reply to that topic and I will do my best to try and help you guys out uh, this way has worked extremely well for me and I find it the most efficient way and I would imagine that people do a similar thing that have multi multiple sort of casts going on 
Okay, so this is installed. I'm going to uncheck. Uh, I don't want to see the start screen, and I don't want it to start with my computer, but I do want the server to start. Click finish. The server started up. That's all you need to do. Potentially, people can stream to you right now. The next thing you're going to want to do is uh, go into where it's installed. So it'll be in either full uh, hard drive, mind C, which most people should be. Uh, programs, files, Adobe, Flash Media Server 4.5, and it's in applications. So I've got one there. I've just made a folder there called XSplit. There's nothing in there. So XSplit is going to be my folder that I'm going to use. So you can do the same thing. Uh, or you can just put numbers at the end so people can't guess the folder if they know your IP or you know they realize what you're doing. Uh, but I've just put expert for demonstration purposes. So that's that. Uh, what you want to do then is the people that are going to be streaming to you, you want to uh, go ahead and get them to download Flash Media Live Encoder, uh, which as a streamer you're probably going to be familiar with this because people have been using this before XSplit was, uh, was developed. So this is all pretty simple. Uh, you just basically want to get your users to put their webcam there in the device section. Uh, for the format, it doesn't really matter. You know, you can have them, you're not going to notice much of a quality difference because they're going to be streaming at a relatively low resolution. Uh, my particular stream, I have the cameras in sort of the top corners. So the cameras are not in a high resolution. They're not taking up all the streams. So I don't need them to stream to me high. Uh, if you've got multiple screens going on, you do flip the cameras, and the cameras do need to be high resolution. Then you may want to have this uh, H.264 codec. It's entirely up to you. Uh, input size: I stick with two, uh, 320 by 240. This works really well for me. I can make the cameras big, and I don't see a quality loss. Uh, and it's also less um, resources on on the on the person's computer that's encoding. You know, if they haven't got the fastest computer and they just want to send you the webcam. This is probably going to be the best settings. Uh, 500 kps should be fine if they really have got bad internet. 350 should be okay as well. Now for the audio, I don't have them send the audio to me because my audio goes through the Xbox. We have parties on the Xbox, so the audio I don't have that sent. You can have the audio sent, but it would get complicated because there is a delay. So you could be talking and then they'll talk and then there's a bit of a delay in the stream. It would get a bit messy. So them things, uh, you may want to jump on Skype for the audio, or depending on how you're doing it. Uh, but me personally, I don't have the audio come through that. Okay, then you want to get them to put your IP address in, or the domain name, wherever you've got this uh, the server hosted. So you'll probably be on your own box, so just put local host. Uh, sorry, they'll need to put um, your IP address in, forward slash stream. But I actually named it XSplit, so if I just put XSplit in there. Uh, and the stream ID now say you've got you've got Peter that's uh, that's going to be streaming to you and you've got John okay so Peter you can have Peter just put in the name Peter one two three and then you can have John do his stream use the exact same settings and he would put John one two three now the numbers at the end are just to keep the streams so if you've got two Johns then you can put different numbers at the end it doesn't really matter you can name the stream or they can name the stream whatever they want as long as you know what the stream ID is in order to pull it up. So let's stick with Andy123 and I'm going to click connect. Uh, oh, for the input and the output here, look, make sure these match. I did forget to mention that. Uh, so just make sure they match. So that's connected. If I click start, that is now streaming to me. Uh, or it would be streaming wherever, uh, you know, whatever I put in for the, for the address. So that's streaming to me. It says 11, 11 frames. It takes a second to, to warm up and get into its groove. But that is streaming. And then to add the stream in, it's really simple. Just go to open up your X split, uh, put in your, you know, your broadcast, whatever, get your, get your stream and everything set up. Uh, go to add live stream, put in the URL, which is rtmp colon forward slash forward slash. Now, because it's locally, I'm just going to put local host. But if it was hosted uh, somewhere else, then you would put that address in. Uh, and the folder is called XSplit. And the stream is called Andy123. And for the buffer, I use 0 0.5. Um, this will basically allow it to buffer for that amount of seconds before you actually get the stream. Which is, uh, which is real good because it basically stops the cameras from lagging. 
uh, and if it does um, well it just gives you flexibility with the buffer you can put it up to one second or keep it at 0 0.5 they both work pretty well obviously the higher the buffer the, the more delay there is on the webcam once that's done click OK and you should see me there we go so there's me you can make it bigger smaller uh, and then you uh, again if you've got two people streaming you just go ahead add the live stream put the same details in but put the other person's ID in and that's it uh, you can see the quality there the quality there is good the speed is good uh, I can make this a little bit bigger there we go and you're not going to see a quality loss the, the speed is going to be fine in my opinion it's much better than Skype uh, <coughs> a lot better than Skype but again you can use this uh, you can get them to stream you know their game if there was gaming or, or you can get them to stream whatever you want to your server uh, and then that's how you add it in through XSplit by adding a live stream there and putting in sort of where the server is and then the stream ID and it's pretty much as simple as that guys I think I've covered most things this is a real basic setup uh, the flash media server does have uh, security options and stuff like that if you plan on you know if your stream is large then uh, you know people will try and uh, exploit these kind of things so have a look in the security settings do a bit of reading up on the flash media server but it's pretty basic uh, so I think that's it hopefully this helped and uh, yeah just let me know give me feedback let me know it's okay and that's it guys hopefully, hopefully it helped